Hey y'all, what's up? It's Kellen with K&T Do Halloween. Hope everybody's staying safe and doing well. I have a little how to hack video for you today. We purchased two of the 12 foot skeleton props that Home Depot has this year with the moving eyes, which were super awesome. But if you were like myself, you didn't read the instructions and by the time you got at home, you realized that some executive or some designer decided, hey, let's build this really awesome 12 foot skeleton, this really higher end prop, the $300 price point, and then let's stick batteries on it. So a bit disappointing, but it's not a big deal. You can easily hack into props like this with DC low voltage controllers and power them yourself so you never have to use batteries again. Now today what I'm gonna show you is how to take apart the pelvis area which contains the batteries and the controller as long as the switch. I'm gonna show you how to take that area apart and add a 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter barrel connection onto the end of it so we then can connect it to a six volt, two amp low voltage controller and plug this guy into a wall outlet and never have to use batteries again. So if you're interested in this video, Please stick around and you guys can probably use this information to hardwire some of your other props so you don't need to use batteries in them as well. So let's check it out. Now before we start, let's do a little bit of a disclaimer. Now please understand, once you take this guy apart and start cutting wires or things like that, you've completely voided the warranty. So be aware of that. And the second thing is, if you don't understand the concept behind what we're doing and behind how to connect power and it makes you feel uncomfortable, please don't try this yourself. This is not an area where you wanna be wishy-washy. You need to understand the concepts. They're not terribly complicated, but I don't wanna encourage anybody who isn't comfortable working with power to try something like this and either hurt themselves, hurt somebody else, or damage the prop or your own property. So just keep that in mind and you know, warranties void, but I don't need those stinking warranties. So let's check it out. Okay, before we get started, I just wanna go over some of the items you'll need so you can gather them together before you start. It's really annoying to have to run all the way over looking for all the different tools and pieces but if that's your jam just ignore this part so one thing you're going to need is a heat gun you're also going to need a glue gun <clears throat> you're going to need some heat shielding in the color of your choice i'm going to be using the quarter inch you're also going to need a female uh, pigtail in the 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter barrel plugs. I typically buy them in a package from Amazon. They come in about a pack of 10 and I'll make sure to leave a link below. Just be sure that you have the female pigtails and not the male pigtails. That way you can plug into a standard uh, DC plug. You're also gonna need a six volt, two amp DC plug with a male connector on the end. This is what we'll be using as our power cord and we'll discuss that in a little bit. You're also gonna need a soldering iron and some solder, or you can use some of these uh, heat shrink solder shields in one. This is what I'll be using today. They're quick, they're easy, they work really well, and I use these guys for Christmas as well. I will link these below so you can check them out. As far as tools, you're gonna to need a pair of wire strippers. I have an assortment of screwdrivers. The biggest thing is you're gonna to wanna to make a screwdriver that is probably four inches, four and a half inches, almost five inches long. The reason is there's two screws on the back side towards the top of the pelvis that will require you to go in quite far to be able to access them. I actually found with this screwdriver, which doesn't have the handle on it, was much too short and didn't reach. So make sure that you have a screwdriver that is a Phillips head, that is the appropriate size for the screw, it's not too small, that way you're not stripping it, and that is long enough to reach into the back. I also have some smaller screwdrivers, just in case I needed it when we get to the box, as well as I found that I needed 
a set of tweezers because there are some small bolts inside of the box. And I also used a drill to create the hole in the leg where the cord will come out and run down the leg to its foot. Now let's get started. First things first, we're gonna have to flip it over. Now once you've gotten it flipped over, you can see that there are a ton of screws on the back side of the pelvis. And this is where the battery door is located on the bottom. First thing we need to do is take apart the back of the pelvis, so that's removing the 19 screws, and then pull the battery compartment out so we can access the wires to wire up our plug. Now it's not a bad idea to have a bowl if you want to take the screws out and set them aside, but I actually found with this project, most of the screws stayed down in the holes and you really didn't have a need for this. Just take this part slow. This is plastic and metal coming together to create a joint. You do not want to force these out of their holes you will find that you will strip the plastic out of the inside of the screw holes, making it much less secure. Now this part is very time consuming, so I'll probably go ahead and speed up the video now. I'm just taking apart, as I said, the 19 screws in the back of the pelvis. Be sure when you take this off not to flip it over and don't lose any of the screws. So what I actually have going on here is I have a screw that when they were probably assembling it, they were using a, uh, a pneumatic or a, an electric screw gun to actually attach pieces or a machine did it. But I have a screw that's slightly stripped. Don't worry. The best thing to do is to grab a screwdriver that's a little bit chunkier uh, and shorter nose. So it doesn't have as much of a point to it. That way, it can still catch the outer parts of the screw. Now, if you notice, I'm pushing down very hard on the back of the screwdriver and going very slowly. That's because I don't want to strip the screw any further than it is. Perfect. Next step is to take the back off. Make sure you watch the cord at the top. Take this guy and set it this side up, somewhere off to the side. And here's the inner bits. He's naked. So to clear off our workspace a little bit, this is the power cable that runs up to the head where the eyes are, and this is the controller box, and this is what we were trying so hard to get at. Now, you can see there's really no way to get this controller box without completely destroying it and ripping it out through the bottom. I guess you could wire it in the battery compartment, but this door is so janky. I also didn't want a power cord coming out of his butt, uh, you know, power cord duty or something like that. So I ran it inside the leg and had it come out the bottom. That way it can follow the leg and the metal work down. So to get the controller out, all you're going to do is pull up. It's just sitting there with some pressure. You can pull the guy up and out. And then to make space, we're going to go ahead and set this on the ground. Now we've got all the good bits. So here's my biggest gripe, other than the fact that it runs on batteries, 
is that if you're going to make something run on batteries, please don't put four tiny screws on the outside and make it very difficult to take this in and off. Because I can tell you after probably two or three battery replacements, uh, you're gonna strip these screws out and you're gonna have problems with this ceiling underneath. So I just, I, I think this door is just junk to be completely honest. Uh, I just, you know, I'm not a fan and definitely it wasn't well thought out because you can't easily get this thing on and off, which I understand, you know, it's hanging off of the ground at about five feet, but this just didn't make sense to me. Now, you don't have to open this back part. The batteries will become obsolete and I strongly suggest writing no batteries on the back. That way nobody ever tries to put batteries in this thing and God forbid if you've wired it wrong and you plug it in. These are not designed for dual power source, they're only designed for one. And you can see just how annoying this is to get open. Now understand, I have this upside down. You would have to do this at about six feet in the air, or five feet in the air, under its you know, crotch bone area. Not the easiest to do. Really cool prop, great sculpt. Poor finishing when it comes to the electronics. But that gives us something to do. Right? We all love a good hack. And this is really to just show how much of a pain in the butt this thing is to get open. Now once you've gotten it to that point, you then have to stick a screwdriver under there to actually pry it up. And you can see the problem I'm still having on this side is I bet you I have another strip screw. And I haven't even actually used this thing yet, so that's a bit annoying. So I definitely have a screw that's in there and stripped. And you can definitely see why this would be a real pain in the butt for anybody to have to do more than once. Well, crazy thing with this one, and this was completely unplanned, but I actually can't get this screw out. It doesn't really matter. I know what batteries are in here. I was more just trying to show as an example of how it was connected, but I actually can't even get this screw open. Uh, so probably to get into it, I'd have to go get my tools downstairs for uh, when I've stripped the screw head out or the other alternative is to just leave it sealed and uh, hack through the back, which is what I'm gonna do. But that just happened as I was filming the video. Um, can't even make it up. And you can see this is brand new and one of my four screws on the back is completely stripped out and won't come out. So this, <laughs> it's actually good that we're wiring it up. <laughs> To show you what's inside, I'm just gonna grab the other one. This is what's inside of the guts that we took out from the other one. This one didn't have strip screws, so I was able to get it off, but I did have trouble getting some of the screws to stay when it went back in. I mean, metal and plastic, they just usually don't play well together when trying to hold stuff, so it is what it is. But what we can see is this has four C batteries. Now, a quick little tip, if you're trying to convert something from battery to power, low voltage power, it's fairly easy to figure out what voltage transformer you'll need to purchase. Now, all AAA, AA, C and D batteries have the same voltage charge. The only difference is the larger C and D batteries can hold more of a charge than the smaller ones but they all have the same exact charge of 1.5 volts. So to find out the voltage you need for a prop, you just have to count up how many batteries are used and then multiply that by 1.5. That will give you the number of volts. So this has four C batteries. Four times 1.5 is six. So you have 1.5 and 1.5, that's three. 1.5 and 1.5, that's three again. So the two together are going to be six. So to power this prop appropriately, you are going to need a six volt DC transformer. 
Same thing if you had four double A's in here. That's still six volts worth of power. The double A batteries just can't hold as much of a charge. So there's a little uh, tip for you if you're trying to figure out, you know, what kind of voltage uh, DC uh, plug do I need to purchase to power said battery operated prop that I'm modifying. And you just need to add up the number of batteries and then multiply that by 1.5 volts to find out the number of volts you'll need in a transformer. Now don't go over that because you can burn it out, but that's just a rough guide for you and hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. Now the next step is to get into the back side of this piece. Now what they've done is they've hot glued in the screw holes. I'm guessing to discourage people from getting into it. I think also it may have been another waterproofing precaution for them, but we'll need to soften this hot glue to get it out so you can actually access the screws and get this guy open. Now this is where my heat gun came in, really handy. Just be very careful. Obviously the thing that you are trying to heat up is also has plastic around it. So you don't want to burn it and you don't want to burn yourself. And then the other thing I have is just a smaller flathead screwdriver. And that's just going to be used to help pick the glue out. Now I'll show you first. I just tried to pick the glue out yesterday and it's that very, it's very sticky hot glue. So if you don't want to use the heat gun, by all means, you don't have to, but I found that it was much easier to use the heat gun on the holes and soften it before I actually went in. I'm just going through very carefully, not trying to mar the plastic. So now that I've uncovered all of four screws from the hot glue, just takes a little bit of time just to get it out of there, but definitely not too terrible. Now we're going to go ahead and take the screws out. And once you have all the screws pulled up, it's fairly straightforward just to pry the top off. And be very careful not to lose the four screws. And it will remain connected on the backside with some hot glue. If you want to, you can just pull that off so you can set the cover aside. And here's what we wanted to get to. Yes. Now, next thing we need to do is we need to go in and snip the red and black wires where it connects to the battery terminals. I definitely don't suggest setting this up to have dual power. It can be very dangerous running power into batteries. Uh, this is just not set up for it. So you can reconnect it by soldering it back to the battery points at a later point if you'd like to go back to batteries. But this will make the battery section obsolete. And then also you'll be able to use 
the switch that's built in, as well as the built-in timer function where it runs for a certain amount of hours and actually shuts off, which is really great to be able to use that. We'll be sending the other cord out through the other side and down through the leg. The big thing to pay attention to is the cord that runs up through the pelvis to the head. This is going to be a longer cord, but if you're using a longer pigtail, it may be easy to get this confused with the one that we're going to add. So just make sure that you know which one is which. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut these wires as close to the solder points on the batteries as possible. And then I'm going to pry up the little bit of glue. Be very careful of these connections where they're running to the board and the switch. Sometimes these can be very fragile. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to strip the wires on the pigtail and then strip the wires on the actual controller box. Now these are small wires, so try to be very gentle. I know I always have a problem with wire cutters where I want to pull to the side. Um, don't do that. Pull straight up. Now that we have these uncovered, I'm just going to twist the ends so they don't fray on me. Like so. And the next thing is I'm going to grab two, excuse me, I'm going to grab two of my all wire gauge, oops, trying to get the top on, two of my all wire gauge 22 to 18, so that's the size of the wire. These are solder, heat shrink, and seal in one. You can see the red part is the seal, the clear part is the heat shrink, and the silver in the middle is the solder. Just slide one over each wire. And I typically apply them to whichever wire I have that is longer. That way it has room. You can trim them down, just make sure you don't trim them down past the red rings or they will not seal at all. Now we're going to go over to my pigtail. And you can see I have two very short tails on this. I want to have a little more working room, so I'm going to strip a little bit more of the jacket off. like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and strip these wires down just because I got fatter fingers and I always have trouble trying to twist wires around each other. So there's one. And two. And then for these ones, we're just going to twist them so they don't fray. This is just habit for me, makes it easier to work with. And then the other thing we're going to grab is some heat shrink tubing. This is a quarter inch. Just sliding it through. You'll get some wires that'll bend, but that's okay. But you want to make sure that you put this on before you connect the wires because you can't afterwards. Doesn't work that way. So now once you've done that, you're going to actually connect red to red and black to black. This isn't always the case, so this is why I want to stop and just have a quick discussion about how these are set up. Each transformer that you buy on the back should have a wiring diagram. This one's going to be incredibly hard to see, but I'll take a picture and post it up. You're going to see a plus, and a minus with a little C and a dot in the middle. What that's doing is it's telling you where the positive and negative wires lie within the connection. So on this one, the positive is in the core in the center, so that's the red wire, and the negative is on the outside contact, so that's the outside shield. 
So you wanna double check that because that's the wiring direction. There are some random plugs out there that will have that flip-flop for different devices. So make sure you check the transformer, and I'll leave a link below to the one I'm using, that it has the center positive and the negative on the outside of the 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter plug. Same thing for your pigtails. You wanna make sure that matches. So the center on this one, the red wire, is the positive and the outer shield is the negative, which lines up with the black. So that's perfect. And then you wanna to go to your battery. Now, as we know with batteries, and you can double check on the other side of this one as well, it makes it fairly easy. Black, negative, red, positive. So this is perfect. You can literally follow the colors if you have the same pieces that, you, that I'm using and you won't have any problems. Next step is to connect the wires together. This is gonna be very difficult to show just because these are very tiny, but I will do my best to insert some pictures and also zoom in. So I'm just holding one wire while I'm wrapping the other wire around it, kind of like they're handshaking. And then once you have that, you just slide the heat shield over so that the silver solder part lines up with your connection. Now at this point, they are fragile, so you don't wanna put any tension on them or you will likely pull them apart. Again, just grabbing one wire. This can be a little bit tedious. And this is also the area where you could solder if you don't have the soldering shields that I have. You do wanna make sure that you are covering it with some heat shrink though if you are soldering to waterproof and make sure your connection is safe. I love using these solder shields and like I said, I use them at Christmas constantly because you just have to strip the connection. You don't have to use clips. And once you apply heat to the, to the strip, it actually melts the solder in the center, creating the connection point as well as waterproofs the outside, which I think is just awesome. So now I'm gonna take the heat gun and just melt the solder and the heat shrink. So you can see there that the heat shrink has shrunk. It's sealed with the red bands as well as the solder has melted, creating that connection point. Next thing I need to do is I either need to use a drill to drill a small hole in the side, or what I'm gonna use is a hot wire foam tool and I'm just gonna melt a cavity in the side for the wire to come out. So I just have the paper towel. And I'm just gonna use the hot tool to create a notch. I'll try and hold this up so you can get a better look at what I'm doing, but I'm just taking the hot tool and just pushing it down into the plastic, letting it do all the work. And I'm creating a cavity for this wire to come out. You wanna make sure that it's smoothed off if you're melting or if you're using a drill. That should be perfect. Make sure you clean the end of your hot tool off. That way the next time you go to use it, you don't go, what the heck is that? So now I can check this. You can see that my wire comes out the side and the top will be able to go on. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the solder connection before I heat shrink it and close it up. That way, if there is a problem, I can deal with it now. I'm gonna plug it in.
Now make sure again, like I said, plug it into the connection that you're working on. This is the connection that goes to the head. It is a similar size, but just don't plug it into this side. So now that that's plugged in, you can go ahead and grab your skeleton head because that's where the cable that has the connection to be able to test this is. Plug your cable in. There's a longer extension cord that runs up through the spine for this guy. So now that I've got this guy plugged in, so it's hard to do one handed. So now that I've got this guy plugged in, I actually can take my controller and push the button on the bottom. And look, we have power. So it's working, it's plugged in, it's running through the switch, which means the timer will work and the eyes are working. So it's perfect, we can seal it up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my black heat shield over my connections. This is just to hold them together to make sure they don't pull apart. And then heat gun it or use a lighter to shrink it down. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use some hot glue just to hold these connections in place, help seal where the cords come out of the sides of the box before we put the top back on. Now one other point while the, heat, the glue gun is warming up, make sure that your hole that you've created is deep enough to actually fit the entire cable. If the cable sticks out a bit, it's going to push up on the top lid and that's going to prevent it from sealing. So you wanna make sure that it actually fits underneath that top lip or flush with it. And then we're gonna hit it with some hot glue after we have put the top back on and that will help seal the connection just like they've done on the other side. Now once your glue gun has heated up, you don't wanna let it get too hot. Uh, I always like to work at a lower temperature when I'm securing wires and things like that. Uh, it's not major if it gets hot, but it can you know, melt the solder connections if you're not careful. I'm just going to dab a bit here and a bit over here to help hold this to the back side of the battery pack. And then I'm also going to blob some on top of my connection over here. Hot glue is awesome to use inside of these kind of props for securing wires. It's widely commercial manufacturers do it because you can easily peel hot glue off in a way. Here you can see what the finished connection box looks like. So here's where we snipped off the battery terminals. Here's our new power plug that's running to our 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter connection. So we can connect to a, our six volt controller, as well as the cord that runs up through the pelvis to the head to control the eyes. Next thing we need to do is just put the top back on. Now, if you'll notice on the insides, I don't know if you'll be able to see, there's four nuts that are embedded in the plastic. Those are the nuts that help hold the uh, door in place and the one that got stuck. So if you really wanted to, you could access them from the back side to try to take them apart, but I really don't ever need to get in the battery compartment, so I'm not worried about it, but I just wanted to mention that. Now to put it back on, you should have hot glue on one of the sides of the door. That hot glue lines up with the original connection. Once you have the screws in, I'm not gonna put hot glue back on top of them. I just really don't see the point and this will allow me to have access if I have any problems with the connection. The last thing I am going to do though is I am going to take some hot glue and just seal around the new connection. This one was a little loose, but just seal around the new connection point and around the old one as well because I ended up breaking it.
Now I also ended up having a bit of an air gap on this side. This is actually where the internal piece of plastic is hitting that screw that wouldn't unthread for me. So what I'm just going to do is I'm actually just going to squeeze some hot glue along this edge just to help keep getting moisture in that area. Make sure you turn your hot glue gun off. Now while this dries, we're just going to set this guy to the side. The last thing we need to do is we need to drill a hole. I'm trying to do this without dumping all the screws. We need to drill a hole on one of the legs. Now from the back side, it's going to be the left hand leg, not the right. The right is where I have the cord running up through the spine to the top and the head. And then on the left side on the back is where I have the other cord running. So I'm going to drill my hole here on the back side. And be careful while you're doing this. You also don't want to hurt yourself and you don't want to lose any of your screws. Perfect. Get a good angle here so I can actually show you what I'm doing. So now you can see I've created a notch where my cord will be able to run out uh, of the leg. Now we've got our pelvis piece, the front piece with the metal in it, back on our work table. Going to take our newly wired box. The orientation of the switch should go up. That means it's in the back. And then you want to make sure that you slide this controller box. Let me see if I can push this back a little bit. You want to slide this controller box so it lines up with the notches on the sides. should just slide down in there. Really shouldn't take a ton of effort. Now you can take your new power cable, run it out the left hand side, and the original cable that runs to the eyeballs can run inside of the trussing here, up the steel frame, and out the top. Now you want to make sure this top cable comes out on the left hand side because that's where the notch has been cut into it. And the last and final step is just putting your back piece on and putting all 19 screws back into place. Now I'm making sure to line the notch up on the top with the power cord as well as the notch that I made up on the bottom. You should hear a click and it fits into place. Make sure it's nice and tight. And again, my cord's coming out of the bottom, which is exactly what I need. And now we just need to tighten all the screws down. And there you have it. We're all finished. We've got it sealed up. We can go ahead and flip it over. We have our tail that's coming out of the bottom, the new barrel connection that we've created for our power plug. And now we can go ahead and test it with our skull eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the power cord and set our skull on top. I'm going to plug the connection in. Hard to get this guy to balance so you can see him. And then plug in the power cord, and we're good to go. We have power. 
testing the switch so it turns on and off. And you can see the eyeballs are working. So we've completed the project. It now runs off of a wall plug instead of four C batteries. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And if you purchased this prop, I hope this helped you figure out how to convert it from battery powered to being able to plug it into the wall, which I think is a much better option in the long run. So thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Stay safe. Be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Bye, y'all.